Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, a couple of weeks ago when I did my uh, little test with my magnetic loop where uh, I wanted to see if it would change when I moved it down near the ground, I had a viewer say, hey, could you do a video on web SDRs? You see, I used a web SDR as a test in that video, monitoring my signal a few hundred miles away. And he, uh, he wants to know, you know, what they are, what they're used for. Um, sure. That sounds like a good idea. I was going to do a video today on that Chameleon CHA Loop 2, the magnetic portable loop, portable magnetic loop, uh, but uh, boy, there's a big low pressure center coming across the country and we've got 30 to 40 mile an hour gusty winds today coming out of the west, so I'm not doing anything outside. <laughs> so web SDRs, internet accessible, software defined, radios that you can listen to in your web browser all over the world. Really cool. Let's go to the computer and have a look at what SDRs are and what the web SDRs are. Let's take a look at a very simplified diagram of a modern receiver. I left one component out down here. I didn't think about it. Down here would be a local oscillator that would feed the mixer. So anyway, um, your uh, signals come in through the antenna and then you've got a pre-selector on a uh, filter. Now the pre-selector is a bandpass filter that would be used to sort of narrow down the amount, of, the amount of RF energy coming in to the frequency that we are, or the area of the frequency that we're interested in. Then you'd have that local oscillator, which your VFO tunes, and it feeds this mixer and what comes out of the mixer is the sum and product of uh, the signals. And the, uh, the VFO is set to a frequency that when mixed with the incoming RF uh, will produce a sum or product on an IF frequency that uh, matches what we're interested in listening to out here. And then that IF chain will um, filter and amplify the signal and then you've got a detector and demodulator that demodulates the audio and finally drives a speaker. So that's a very simplified diagram of a modern receiver. In an SDR radio the hardware is greatly simplified. You're down to a basic front end and then some analog to digital conversion where the RF itself is actually sampled and then finally detection and demodulation is all done through software making the radio completely flexible. It can receive and process just about any type of signal that the software can handle. Uh, what about SDR hardware? Well, here's some examples of some common SDR hardware. These low-cost USB dongles are available all over uh, Amazon and other places for very low cost. Uh, I've seen them as low as uh, 20 or even $15, maybe cheaper nowadays. Often they're kind of limited in that they can only go from 70 megahertz up through microwave frequencies, uh, but some are manufactured uh, with lower HF uh, range capabilities already built in, and there are articles out there on how to hack some of these for direct RF sampling to get them down to HF. Um, commercial hardware, like the SDR Play pictured here, are manufactured purpose-built to operate on the entire spectrum from very low frequencies, maybe 100 kilohertz all the way up through microwave, but they usually cost a bit more. So there's plenty of hardware options available. Uh, software. There's a lot of free software out there. There's some commercial software, but there is also free software. A popular one for Windows is HDSDR, uh, shown here, uh, and uh, it, it, it allows you to tune all over the radio spectrum, um, look at a waterfall of the spectrum here and see where the signals are. Pick and choose the signals you want, pick and choose the mode that you want, uh, AM, uh, uh, FM, lower sideband, upper sideband, CW, DRM, uh, even, you know, since, since you're defining your radio and software, you can set up all kinds of demodulators. On the Linux side of things, you've got programs like GQRX, shown here, 
which was built using GNU Radio, sort of a Lego building set for software-defined radios. There's also Cubic SDR, which is uh, starting to gain some popularity. I really like the interface on Cubic SDR. Uh, it's my favorite right now. Uh, now, what people did was they figured out that since that signaling is digital, uh, you should be able to stream it across the internet. And they started coming up with um, web-based SDRs. And right here we're looking at the page for webSDR.org. There are two or three others. Uh, I think there's one called uh, SDR.hu. And there's a third one that I can't think of right off the bat, but I'm just going to use webSDR.org for my example. I'll put links to the other ones and this one in the description below. Uh, this will display a list of web SDR radios that people have set up. Now these are all voluntary. Um, if we go down here to the map, you can see that all over the world uh, there are receivers set up. Um, look in Europe, they're really clustered in Europe. There's just tons of them. These are basically radios that you can tune into and listen to all over the world. Uh, is, that is just too cool, isn't it? Uh, I use them for testing. Um, when I was up here in Indiana, uh, I would uh, connect to some of these and see where my signal was getting, how far out I was getting, and what it sounded like. Um, they're handy for that. I used it in that antenna test video. So they're handy for testing your, uh, your uh, antennas or your radios out, seeing what your signal's like. You know, or if you're just trying to uh, do some shortwave listening and, and you want to listen to a radio in uh, South America, you know, you can come down here and there's several of them in South America. Or, you know, if you want to listen to one in, hey, look, there's one in South Africa. There's one in Australia. You know, what if, what if you want to listen to what's going on in the shortwave bands or the AM broadcast band or the FM broadcast band in Australia? You can probably do that. Now, these are not all the same. Um, as I said, they're, they're set up by volunteers. So some people set them up for specific things. For example, here in the list right here, number 188, we can see um, there's some information here about what it is and where it is. I think this one's in Italy. And uh, he's only got it set up to cover uh, 2 meters and 440. Or, uh, right. Uh, here's another one that is only set up to, to cover 160 meters and 80 meters. So sometimes they're kind of limited in the bands that they cover. Um, Oops, didn't want to do that yet. Uh, other times, they're more broad. Uh, this one here covers the entire HF spectrum from 0 kilohertz to uh, 29.160 megahertz. Uh, that's, that's quite a broad range. There's a few like that. Some of the others will have bands uh, set up, like this one is, is covering 17 meters, 20 meters, 40 meters. 60 meters, 80 meters, and 160 meters, and he's on a 200 foot long double-sized G5RV antenna. They'll put some information over here as to what they're doing. Uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a pretty interesting thing. So let's pick, let's pick one that's here in the U.S. We go back to the map here, and uh, let's see here, uh, number 78. Let's go see what he is. All right, so we'll scroll up here, number 78. Uh, he's covering some odd bands. Well, it looks like he gets 20 meters there. He gets 40 meters there. Okay, let's go to that one. It's in Georgetown, Kentucky. All right. When you go to the SDR, you'll get the web interface. Now, this software that they're using runs on a Linux server, and it is publicly available, I believe. Um, I'm not sure about the setup. I might do a video on setting one up. I might actually do that just to, just for a video. Uh, it shouldn't be too difficult to do. Okay, so we don't want to be on 7200. <laughs> I know that right away. Let's just move here. And I'll zoom in a little bit. And you can see the interface is pretty nice on this one. Here is our tuning. I have a fairly poor internet connection, that's why this graphic garbage is happening. Usually the waterfall stays pretty clean and you can see the signals. Um, you can easily and quickly tune around by simply sliding this. You can punch your frequency in here. You can uh, move it in steps. You can adjust your filter 
if I use the mouse button, mouse scroll wheel to scroll in, I can actually drag the uh, side of the filter if I want to widen it or narrow it. Uh, I can change modes over here, AM, FM, upper sideband, lower sideband, upper sideband narrow, lower sideband narrow, AM narrow. I can adjust the filter wider or narrower, CW. Uh, so it's, you know, it's a pretty nice uh, radio receiver. And right now I'm listening to signals out of this machine in Kentucky. Pretty neat, huh? So that's basically um, how web SDRs work and how you can uh, use them to tune around on radios all over the U all over the world. Uh, pretty cool. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.